Yo, what's going on guys? Hope everyone had a happy Easter. Um, I'm about to go back to school soon. This kind of sucks, but... Alright, anyways. So, what I want to talk about is IV infusion. And IV infusion is going to be a big topic for the test, I think. Um, and I want to try to keep it quick. I know my videos kind of go on for a long time, and it's... Like, if I were to watch like a 17 or 15 minute video, I definitely wouldn't be able to like, watch the whole thing. So I'm gonna try to keep this one quick. Okay, so when we look at IV infusion, right? What is IV infusion actually? IV infusion is just um, when they, it's like a slow infusion of drug over time. So when you're at the hospital, they'll kind of stick a needle in you. And they'll, they'll slowly, you know, infuse the drug inside you. And it's not all, you know, one time, it's just, it's slowly. The whole idea is that it's slow. Okay, so when we think about IV infusion in the classroom, um, it's not going to be, you know, like a realistic situation. We kind of have to make some assumptions. And the first, the first assumption we're going to make is that it's a one compartment model, right? It's going to be, you know, one compartment model. Um, and I'll kind of I'll explain that later on. And the second um, assumption we're going to make is that the elimination, the rate of elimination is going to be uh, first order. So okay, we took care of that, and then the last assumption we're going to make is that the rate of fusion, infusion, or the rate of input, rate of entry is going to be zero order. Okay, so really simple, just zero order um, uh, entry and first order exit. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. First order exit. Or my handwriting screw. Um, okay. So let's take a look at this. This is the compartment in the body, and. Um, in normal, this is like a normal situation, we'll have the central compartment, we'll have um, the central compartment. And what does the central compartment mean? It just means whatever the drug is going into. So the first thing the drug is going to hit is plasma, right? So plasma is in the central compartment. What else is in the central compartment? Highly perfused tissues. Because highly perfused tissues will receive the drug right away. Because perfusion, you know, if there's more perfusion, you're going to get more drug and these highly perfused tissues um, include, you know, the heart, uh, kidney, um, the liver, these are all in the central compartment because drug gets there right away, drug is distributed right away. Now we look at peripheral compartments, peripheral com compartments um, are compartments where the drug doesn't go as easily, it takes some more time for the the drug to fully distribute there and you know i don't know what like organs are less perfused but maybe like your toes or something like your toes you know you know i get cold feet so i definitely know i don't get that much perfusion so um peripherals here and then you know what we have is like i said before zero order whoops sorry zero order um rate of entry rate of perfusion zero order and exit is first order and this is all rate, so rate of elimination and rate of entry. And we know from before that rate is, for zero order, is KO, right? And this is rate, um, first order rate is KC or KX. We're gonna use KC here, because um, Xiao kinda used C in this, in this, you know, segment IV infusion. Um, so K is, you know, we know KO is the rate, exactly. We know K, K in first order is the rate constant. And only when the rate constant is multiplied by a amount does it turn into rate. So k in first order is, you know, we know that's different. That's a rate constant. It's not actually rate. Rate is only when it's multiplied by c. Then, you know, together this becomes a rate. Okay, so anyways, um, what I want to say is that in um, our body, you know, this is what we have. We have a central compartment and we have peripheral compartments. But in this, um, in, IV, in IV bolus, for the sake of this exam, we assume that it's a one compartment model. And basically what a one compartment model just means, means it's just, we're just gonna take all this peripheral, sorry, we're just gonna take all this peripheral and central, I mean, we just shade it in and we call it, we just call this whole thing central. So we're assuming that everything gets distributed. That's our assumption, right? Even to our toes, we're, we're gonna assume that Okay, um, the drug is going to go there right away. Distribution is going to happen instantaneously to every part of the body. And only then can we call our whole body one compartment, a one compartment model. Okay.
so this next part we're going to talk about um, the actual rate for you know this IV bolus and like we said before um, the rate of entry is KO this is entry which is zero order and exit is um, uh, first order right so it only makes sense that the overall rate is going to be um, a subtraction right because you have entry but then you have exit and exit we all know is a negative process so we have um, entry and exit and then here's kind of like a, like a graph to kind of show you what an IV bolus injection looks like in terms of plasma concentration versus time so we start here oh just one more thing to touch upon sorry um, elimination is always happening in the body so this KC here this is always happening always 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 happening and I'll kind of explain that what I mean by that okay so we take this graph this graph is um, of concentration versus time in the body so we have an IV we give a drug right and it'll slowly go up slowly go up in concentration and then it levels off and it levels off to something called a, a steady state concentration CSS that's what it levels off to okay so um, the idea here is that um, the drug concentration in the body is going to increase but then elimination is going to kick in to kind of level it out so right I would say right here right here right before it hits you know the CSS this is when KO is greater than KC right because KO is entry KC is exit so then obviously if it's going up KO has to be greater so then right here you know when it flatlines this is called CSS and CSS we know it has to be this right when entry is equal to exit so there's no more drug going in and there's no more drug there's no um sorry there's not a greater amount of drug entering and there's not greater amount of drug exiting it's equal that's why this concentration in the body you know it flatlines but you know while here it's going up we know that an entry is greater than exit so what I wanted to talk about with elimination elimination is always happening so elimination we see here that even though KO entry is greater than elimination elimination there's still a little bit right it's, there's still a little amount uh, elimination obviously oh, I'm gonna see here sorry elimination obviously is happening here it's just equal to entry so that's what I'm trying to say and the cool thing is is that we know elimination is always happening because if elimination didn't happen here's what the graph would look like an IV uh, infusion would look like this and it would just go up 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 and it wouldn't stop right because there's no elimination the only reason why we know elimination exists is because the graph flatlines and this is in real life too when um if i guess if you take a lap you'll look at you know if a patient's lap and you'll see that you know their uh, plasma concentration of the certain drug flatlines over time okay so um another cool thing to notice is that we see the um the concentration rises steeply here right i would say about here to here it's pretty steep but then it it kind of flattens so what does that mean it just means that here um let me use a different color it just means that first order elimination right rate of first order elimination which is kc remember how we said it was dependent it's dependent because there's a C in there. So if you have more C, you get more elimination. If you have less C, you get less elimination. So right here, you know, C is not that big. C is small, right? It's small C. So elimination, it's not that big. That's why it's more, it's steeper. You get to here, you know, it's still, you know, it's like kind of still small. It's still steep. But then once you get up, you get a big C is a little, it's getting big. Uh, C is getting big now. So then elimination, it's the dependent on concentration so then it starts to kick in kick in kick in kick in so then that's why it starts steep the uh, concentration starts steep but then as elimination takes over the concentration levels out until you get you know the max CSS okay so this next part we're going to talk about is the um, the rate equation 
And what the rate equation is really is just, um, like we said before, KO minus KC. And this is the slope, right? We know that rate is a slope, is the, uh, the slope. Rate is the slope, okay. So then we want to find the actual equation, right? We want to find this, the equation of this line that we got before. So how do we do that? We integrate. We integrate, and you know, it's a whole process. I don't think Shai even explained it, but it, we know that if we integrate D, um, dc over dt is equal to ko minus kc, we get c is equal to ko over kv times 1 minus e to the negative kt power. So this is the, total, the final equation we get. And I just, okay, I just rewrote this, so, you know, you know we get C equals KO over KV, 1 minus E to the negative KT. Um, but the important question to ask is, when does steady state occur, CSS occur, based on this equation? Okay, so I wrote two requirements here. One, requ one, uh, one requirement when CSS, for CSS to occur is that we know KO is equal to KC, right? That's obvious. Um, like I explained before, CSS only occurs when infusion equals elimination, entry equals exit. That's when it flat lines. Okay. The second requirement is that when T is large, because think about it, concentration, um, steady state, doesn't occur right away, right? It's not like you give a drug and it's like, boom, right away. No, it's not like that. It's more like this. So some time has to elapse some time has to elapse and generally we'll say a long time has to elapse for it to finally reach this point right and the flat line which is css so then we're going to assume that t is large and i want you guys to kind of put this in into the into the equation um make t a super big number like 100 right and you can kind of forget about k at the moment it doesn't matter just make t or, or kt make kt a super big number so then we do e to the negative, let's say I did 100, and we get a small s number, like 0 0.0000000000, whatever, you know, we get, a, we get a super small number. Um, and we can treat that number, we'll take this whole part, this whole part is the super small number, right? And we'll make it zero, so this whole thing we can treat it, it's not zero, but it's pretty, you know, darn close to zero. So we turn the equation from C um, is equal to KO over KV um, times one minus E to the negative KT, we turn that into CSS, because it's at steady state now. CSS is equal to KO over, sorry, KO over KV times one minus zero. And the zero was, you know, E to the negative KT, we just made it we just made t really large, and if we make t really large, then e to the negative kt becomes really small. So it becomes that. And what's one minus zero? That's one. So ultimately, this equation becomes CSS is equal to KO over KB. Okay, so this is just the last part. I just rewrote all the equations out. So we have the rate equation first, dc over dt is equal to KO minus kc. We have the equation of the line, the actual equation. This is the, the most, probably the most important equation for IV bolus. I would really just memorize this because you really, you can't like not memorize it. It's, yeah, it's pretty important. Okay, so it's C is equal to, you know, K over KB, whatever, blah, 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 all that. And then we have the concentration steady state is equal to just what we found before, KO over KB. And we took out this whole part, right? This whole thing, we just took it out, okay. So let's do a practice problem. And this is straight from the book, from the Madan Lin book. Okay, so it says the half-life of drug X in an, in an adult patient is six hours in the parent volume of distribution. Sorry, I spelled this distribution wrong, whatever. Is 30 liters if this patient is administered drug X by continuous intravenous infusion. Okay, so we know automatically, let me use a different uh, color. So we know automatically that this is referring to IV infusion. And, um, there's another another um, scenario that's IV bolus too, but you know this problem says IV infusion at a rate of 45 milligrams per hour. Calculate the concentration of drug X in plasma at the following time periods. Okay, so how do we do this? 
the first thing I like to do is write down everything that I have, all the information that I have, and then all the information that I'm missing. So this is half-life. So I know half-life of drug X is six hours. Right, units, always stress units. Um, apparent volume distribution, so V is 30 liters. Okay, if the patient is blah, 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 so we know it's IV, it's not IV bolus, sorry, it's IV, um, it's IV infusion at a rate of, okay, so this is important, you need to know what this is at a rate of 45 milligrams per hour. This rate is the infusion rate, and the infusion rate is, we know, is KO, right? The infusion rate is KO, so it's 45 milligrams per hour. And we're lucky because I picked, you know, this problem, all the units are the same, but just be ready on the test to kind of pay attention to units because Shao can kind of trick you. Like he might put, you know, minutes, or he might put ML, he might put, you know, microgram. Just make sure of that. Okay, what else do we have? Um, calculate the concentration of drug and plasma at the following time period. So time. Let's do this one for now. Let's ignore, let's ignore the it's three hours and let's ignore the six hours. So time is one hour, right? Okay, so what, what equation are we going to use? Well, we, remember how I started this? This is the one we're going to use. So C. So we're going to use this equation. Um, C is equal to KO over KV. 1 minus e to the negative kt. Okay, so what are we missing though? We have, um, let's, let's check off everything that we have. We have, um, we have KO, which is 45. Uh, we have V, which is 30. We have um, T, which is one hour. We're missing K. How do we get K? K, we know, is related to half-life, right? Which is exact, specifically first order half-life, we know that. Half-life is equal to ln2 over k. So we have half-life. Let's just you know plug it in and find k. So k actually turns out to be... So k ends up being... Um, I'm just going to round to 0 0.115, uh, 1155, whatever. 1155, and the units are per hour, right? Because it's first order. First order um, half-life is... Also, it's independent of concentration, but the units are one over uh, hour. Okay, so now we have everything. And let's plug everything in. And um, don't forget this negative sign. A lot of times when I try to do this, I forget the negative sign and I get a totally wrong number. You have to put this negative sign in front when you, when you raise e to the whatever power. Don't forget that. Okay, so let me just calculate C. C ends up being, so C ends up being, um, if time is one hour, C ends up being uh, one point, Four one six uh, milligrams per liter. Okay, so um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then for three hours and six hours, all you do is you replace one hour, you replace that with three, and you replace it with six. And um, there's something cool with what happens when um, you have six hours, right? Because six hours is the actual half life. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's the half-life. So I, I think there should be, like, if you kind of work it out mathematically, you can, like, prove that, um, uh, I don't know, whatever, never mind. Okay, so, yeah, just plug in three and plug in six. And that's pretty much what it is. Um, thanks. Video came out to be long anyways, but, uh, you know, it's a work in progress.